Welcome to 100 Days of Pendulum! Now you might be wondering, what does that mean, Trip? Does that mean you're just gonna break tables for 100 days? Yes, that's exactly what it means. It means content every single day for 100 days because I love you guys! Let's go! Every single day, baby, the 100 Days of Pendulums. Now, if you guys are excited for literally content every day from now until September, smash the subscribe button. 100 Days of Pendulums, and you guys will call me out if I don't post. We're gonna go all the way every single day, we're gonna do it. I would also like to say one massive, amazing, amazing news that you guys are gonna absolutely love. Now, today's video, our first 100 Days of Pendulums, I wanna discuss my friend's brother over here. Pot of Greed's brother, Pot of Prosperity. Why, how, what you need to play, and the budget alternatives and everything of that sort. But before we get into that, I would like to say that every single person that's purchased a Trip Gaming playmat, especially the Outlet playmats, they've been really late lately, I, I, and I apologize for that, I really do from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the Outlet playmats have been hella late, I've been trying a new method. No, none of that anymore. They've all been shipped out, all the mats have been shipped out officially, no, every single order, and I'm really proud of myself for it, finally. Should have done it earlier, but from now on, I'll be doing a new method, and I'll be teaming with Team Samurai X1, collaboration on a brand new playmat. I'm so excited to introduce to you guys my new playmat for the new Pendulum Revolution format. Before I win YCS Hartford, get yours now before I win YCS Hartford. Here it is, baby. Beyond the Pendulum. Beyond the greatness. Ah, get your Beyond the Pendulum wife and play us now. Guys, there's only 100 available. And on one of the 100 orders, I'll be putting in a very special Pendulum giveaway surprise. I'm not going to mention what it is, but it is. You're going to want to see this. So get yours right now. A lucky winner will be getting it. And only 100 are available. So get yours now. I'm super excited for it. But with that being said, I'm also super excited for 100 Days of Pendulums. And like I said, there's going to be a whole brand new change of the channel. Not only will it be 100 Days of Pendulums, not only is it going to be a brand new playmat and it's so beautiful. And it'll be an amazing giveaway collabing with Team Sam X1. But also a whole brand new Patreon, baby. Every single video on Patreon is going to be absolutely amazing. Lots and lots of duels on Patreon. If you guys want to see lots of duels commentated by the Pen God, lots of content. Like, if you guys can't get enough Pendulum content, go on Patreon right now. We'll be showcasing duels, utilizing this exact content about Pot of Prosperity and a whole bunch of other stuff. So go check that out now. Anyways, without further ado, 100 Days of Pendulums starting right now. Why should you play Pot of Prosperity in your Pendulum deck? Let's go. You want to know why are you playing Pot of Prosperity in Pendulums? Why not Pot of Desire, whatever, whatever. Okay, so first things first, you have to understand that Pot of Prosperity... Uh, you cannot play Desires, because if you banish Scythe, your combo's gone. If you banish Pendulum Graph, I cannot stress how, how far back that puts you. Pendulum Graphs make Pendulums. And Prosperity ensures that you have, in my deck, I have 10 Extenders. I have 10 Extenders to make Beyond the Pendulum. Okay? So, Pot of Prosperity allows me to actually play 13 Extenders, which you always want to see one. You just want to see one, maybe two is fine. But you want to really, at least want to see one. You always, always want to see a spell card as well. You play three pen call, three ghost lines, one star pen graph, but prosperity makes so you play 10 spells. Okay. You're able to also search any of your starters. So it gives you the opportunity. Do you want to, do you, do you want to search a starter? Do you want to search an extender? And most importantly, do you want to search a side card? Now, if you guys saw my deck list, I showcased that I side deck three Regeki, three Dark Hole, three Lightning Strike, three Evenly Match. In this format, draw one of them against Sword Soul, they're destroyed. Draw one of them against Despia, they're destroyed. Draw one of them against Flunder, they're destroyed. Draw one of them against a Needle Fiber Scythe deck, TG Wonder Magician will not trigger. All these decks are the most played decks in this format. So this is not the format where you should be playing Regeki Dark Hole. I know it's so basic, but that's it. And now post side deck, when you get Prosperity into it, it is just so crazy, which is why you need to see it. All right? So now that we discussed... Why you need to play it, you want to see the extender, you want to see the starter, it ensures you see Wisdom Might, it ensures you see Joker, whatever it may be, it's extremely powerful. Now we're going to discuss the most important part that a lot of people don't understand, and that is what do you banish? This is very difficult, because you look at this extra deck, which by the way is the updated extra deck, which is absolutely amazing. I'm going to win Hartford with this deck. And you're going to think, what do I banish? Well, going first and going second, you might not know this, it's a little different. Going first, okay... You always banish three. You will never banish six going first. Why? Because I'm literally going to... I can shuffle up my deck a billion times. Whatever other four cards that we draw will always be very good. And you're always going to have some form of combo. Now, I look at this hand, you're like, 
Oh, Trip, you don't have Harmonizing Magician, you can't play. Later in the 100 Days of Pendulum, I'll discuss how to combo the Harmonizing Magician. I'll discuss everything. But this hand does not need anything. This hand is perfect. This hand is full combo. The, just the four cards. Without Pot of Prosperity, this four cards are full combo. So I don't want to get rid of too much of my grind game for no reason. The only time you have Pot of Prosperity going first is like you literally, like you magically doing book has ruined your hands or your opponent cheated you and you end up having four high scales. Okay, sure, Prosperity for six, but that will never happen, so don't worry. All right, now back to what you're going to banish. If you're going, for, if you're first, all right, if you're first, here's the cards that you are going to banish for Pot of Prosperity. So I'm going first. You don't know what you're playing. This is game one. You have no idea what you're playing. I'm always going to get rid of Zeus. I'm always going to get rid of Dark. And now at this point, if you those two are the cards you always get rid of going going when you're going first. Next, this last slot, the third slot, is saved for if you know what your opponent is playing. This is if you're going first. Maybe it's post side like you drop a spray and you're going first. This card differs on the matchup. If you draw Scythe, obviously you're going to banish Dagda. Never banish Artemis. It's very important to why this deck thinks Artemis is very important. I'll discuss it in a later video perhaps. But the card that you banish here, if you don't know what you're playing, is always Borolode Savage Dragon. If you don't know what you're playing. It is not very mandatory. But you don't know what, if you don't know what you're playing, you don't know if Baguska could win the game. Because Baguska defeats Flunder, it defeats Sword Soul, it defeats Despia. You don't know if you need Tornado Dragon. Uh, to be able to pop your scythe, and you don't know if you need Time Star to search an extender as well as searching a tuner. You don't know, so you don't want to get rid of any of those XYZs unless you're positive. Savage was never necessary. Baron, you keep in case you want to pop a card, and the rest you just keep. Access code is debatable, but you just keep one card that destroys the board going second when you're going first. So going first, these are the three you typically get rid of. In the scenario where you're facing a deck that you know for a fact. Baguska is dead, and you know for a fact Dagda is dead. Let's say you're playing Flunder. If you're playing Flunder, get rid of Dagda because you don't you know you're not gonna scythe them. And then you just keep you can keep Savage or Zeus. I would keep Savage. Zeus, you, you go into very rarely. It's not a card you go into too often. It just eventually uh, maybe. Now let's say you're going second. Going second is completely different. Going second, you are banishing six. There's no grind game. You're going second. The grind game of going first and going second are so different. So the cards that you banish going second is very simple. You will never, you will not try to cite them going second. Going second, you break their board and you set up perhaps a pen graph or maybe one more interaction, maybe like a barrier, but you clear the whole board. So going second, you get rid of Dagda, TG Wonder Magician, because those are specifically cards that will break the board. Now going second, sorry, cards that will scythe lock. Now going second, you know what you're playing. Are you really going to Appaloosa going second? There's a very slight chance, but maybe not. So I'm going to put to the graveyard the cards that are optional right now, okay? When you're going second, you want to look at your opponent's boards, and I'm going to discuss everything. These five are untouchable. These five links, don't even look at them. Yeah, and the Baron, don't even look at these six. I will, like, don't talk to me if you're going to banish one of these six. Trust me, don't get rid of Artemis. Never banish Zeus going second. And at this point, you have to make a decision. You look at what your opponent is playing. So we already banned Dagda TG Wonder for sure. You know is gone. All right. Now out of these, out of these four, which ones will affect them? I tr never get rid of Time Star. Really helps. Okay. Out of these, which one are you likely to go into? You are not going to Apollosa him. Trust me. Okay. Savage is the least likelihood. Dark. Can Dark really help you? Can Dark really help you here? Can does the opponent? Are you only special summoning Vishuda? Can Dark specially link to? If it gets special at link two or special at negate, you keep dark in your extra deck. Can Baguska stop them? Can Baguska outright destroy them? Do they have a shooter to stop the, the Baguska? If, if it destroys them, you always keep the Baguska. Going second, you will very rarely, rarely need Tornado unless they're playing a back row deck. So at this point, you make the decision what, what's better? Do they have a link two? Charmer, Baguska, Time Star, one of these. Typically, these are the six you banish going second unless they have a crazy good dark target. So these are the six that you banish. Now that you guys know what you banish going first, now that you know what you're banishing going second, and now that you know that you need to play the search starter or extender, I want to give you guys a hypothetical situation. You're going second here, okay? Now I'm going to switch up my hand a little bit. Now a scenario here to show you just how powerful Pot of Prosperity is. And now let's say 
You cannot afford Water Prosperity. I assume that would be one of the reasons you don't want to play it. That's fine. Okay, I understand. I would play Allure of Darkness over it. That is my budget alternatives. Okay, I'll have more budget alternatives later in this video. But you have to witness how good Water Prosperity is going second. So you look at our hand right now. We already have plenty of starters, right? We have Joker. We have Pen Call. We have Harmonizing. Like, what more does this hand need? You're going second. You're going second, okay? Curtain Razor, Chronograph, we have two extenders. What more does this hand need? This hand is absolutely absurd going first. Going second, though, there might be a small, light, slight issue. You don't have board breakers. You don't have, you can't hand trap your opponent. You have no defensive cards. What if your opponent's playing Sword Soul and has a board of Long Yuan Synchro 10, Shi Shao, Imperm, 10 E Synchro 8 Berser Draco Berserker, and a Blackout? That's six interruptions. What are you going to do? And Yanni has a Baylor. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to listen to Trip Gaming and play Pot of Prosperity. That's what you're going to do. You're going to banish the six that you know you're going to banish Tornado Dragon. What the, what the heck is Tornado Dragon doing in Sword Soul? Okay? Dagda, we don't need We're, we're not sight locking him. In, okay? We're, we're getting ready to teach one a magician. Apollos is great against him. Dark. Like, he doesn't even have any dark in his graveyard. I'm going to keep a Guska because there's no Vashuda in his graveyard. Savage Dragon is the much worse bear in the floor. Five are banished. At this point, I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, you know what? This is looking really good. I do want to save Zeus and Time Star. Am I realistic? Again? Apollosa does destroy his deck. I do want to keep it. Time Star Baguska, very tough. Time Star Baguska. He has no. I'm gonna make it. The five is very easy. I'm gonna make a judgment call. He has no shooter in the graveyard or or Ashana. He can out the Baguska. Baguska will destroy him. So you know what? I'm gonna get rid of my Time Star in this scenario. Okay. So what can I possibly get? Oh, man, I really wish I could see a side card. So well, oh my god. It'll, well, I really wish I see a side card. Boom, right, Regeki outs the entire Sword Soul board. The entire board. Literally the entire fucking board. And he can't do anything about it. He sees Regeki and he quakes in his boots. You'll hear an earthquake. How badly he'll be scared. I can hear it from across the Dueling Book table. All right. So he has his Long Yuan. He has a She Shell, Blackout, all that. He can even have a D barrier. I don't even care. He still, he still loses. Activate Regeki. Pot of Prosperity did that. If you guys saw that, Allure only showed me two cards. Pot of Prosperity shows me six. Pot of Prosperity is either a starter, extender, or literally a Regeki. I'm sure you guys grasp how insane this is. Against Flunder, some way, the ways you defeat the deck is sometimes you literally need to Pendulum Summon, do some stuff. And at the end of the combo, I also even playing around uh, Prosperity even helps playing around D Barrier. Because a lot of the times, you have to literally Prosperity for six to ensure you get Pen Graph. Pen Graph is how you beat D Barrier. I'll post that in a different video. Anyways, on Patreon, I'm going to show some tools now about this, but Pot of Prosperity, there's so much information here about Pot of Prosperity. You guys, like, like, you need to play this guy's brother, man. This card is absurd. It, could, it does exactly what needs to be done, and it, it's absolutely amazing. And you know what? I'm going to actually showcase. I was going to showcase just on Patreon, but I'm going to show you guys right now a duel of Pot of Prosperity. I don't even care. I'm going to show you guys a duel right now Pot of Prosperity because you can see just how absolutely broken this card is, okay? It is insane, and it is one of me so many duels. Uh, we're going to get straight into it uh, right now. We're going to show another one on Patreon after that. Let's go. So now I'm going to showcase you guys a quick duel against my boy where I show just how crazy Pot of Prosperity really is. Now, you guys just saw the theory where I said if you Pot of Prosperity going second against the Sword Soul and the Jar Geki, you auto win. But you guys look at my hand right now. I'm going first, okay? This is... I have everything I need already. This is already crazy. What does Pot of Prosperity serve as in a hand that's crazy? What am I missing? I'm missing a Harmonizing Magician right now. Do you guys notice that? I'm missing a Harmonizing Magician. I have no way to get it aside from Beyond the Pendulum, which is the biggest hand trap card I've ever seen in Pendulum history after Electrum. So it's not confirmed that I'm going to get Harmonizing. So my Pot of Prosperity now is just telling myself, okay, what's my hand missing? I have, oh, I have Scales. I have Oath Wisdom. Great. I have Scales. Fantastic. I have Extenders and Astro and Souls, but I'm missing Harmonizing. So, okay. Why don't I just date for Harmonizing? I'm only going to banish three like I told you guys. Let's see, the three, the three cards I banish are Baguska, Dark, and Zeus. The reason I banish these, I know what I'm playing. I'm playing in my boy where I know Dark and Baguska both do nothing against his deck. And Zeus, I'm going first, so you're going to get rid of that. So the three cards that get revealed for Baguska, uh, for Prod of Prosperity are Curtain Razor, Joker, Iris. I already have Oath and Iris with Oath and Wisdom. I already have my scales I want. You always want those two scales. I already have two extenders and Souls and Astro. What do I need Curtain Razor for? What Pot of Prosperity does, it just ensures whatever I'm missing, I get it's basically a searcher that says add any card you want from your deck to your hand. 
And you don't lose your grind game because banishing three is nothing. You're never going to use three, three cards anyways. So I choose Joker. Why? Because Joker searches Harmonized Magician. So now I'm guaranteed I'm getting access to Harmonized Magician. Now in doing so, it makes it so my Beyond the Pendulum, he actually has Ash and Valor in hand, okay? I'm not going to reveal his hand and what he's playing because my friend wants to keep his deck secret. Uh, but I know he, he's Ash and Valor in hand right now. So if he, he, he's not choosing to Valor the Beyond the Pendulum most likely, but he opts not to hand trap the Joker. If he hand trap the Joker, our Beyond the Pendulum resolve and we will get our Harmonizing Magician. Do you see this big brain play where you're just, no matter what happens, you get access to your full combo. Now, if, if he hand traps Beyond the Pendulum, I could not care less. He ashes the Astro, which is a good Astro because that puts me on, you better have another extender to make Beyond the Pendulum. Not, so, so I'm like, that's a good play, that's a good play. Uh, so he ashes the Astrograph, that way I'm not able to actually get it, but I do have another extended because we're the playing the we're the best playing the best deck on the planet. I go beyond the pendulum, he opts not to affect Wheeler because we already have harmonizing. If it wasn't for Joker, we wouldn't have harmonizing. If it wasn't for prosperity, we wouldn't have Joker. Not the only did Joker just get us harmo, but it actually got us a free monster to make beyond the pendulum with. Like it's absolutely insane. Popper's gonna get anything you want. They get you the best cards in your deck. So here we're gonna pendulum summon. I do not summon the Astrograph. Look, now I summon the old dragon. Because of Potter's trying to get me the Joker. What could he do here? He has Valor in his head. He can't do anything. He actually cannot do anything. I go Baron to Floor. Celestia will stop him with the, doing the Acid Thought Effect of Baron Floor. And then nothing you can do. The duel's over. And I'm going to show you guys a quick little combo here, which is, I think is amazing for you guys to witness. I go Dag the Effect to add Harmo Effect. Dag the Set. I'm going to go uh, Baron Effect to pop the Time Star. Astro Effect to Special Summon. Adding the Double Iris. I have not used the Effect of Time Star yet. I'm going to use Time Star now to search Tuning Magician. And look at this. We gotta go Needle Fiber. This is the new combo that I do. Go into Savage Dragon. And now this ends on Savage Dragon, Baron the Floor, Needle Fiber, Time Star, Pengraph for two with Scythe Lock. The deck's insane. And there's a lot of cool tips and tricks, which obviously I'll show you guys in our 100 Days of Pendulum video. But this is just a little sneak peek at our combo. And he has Ash and Baylor in hand. I'm not going to reveal what my boy's playing, so I'm not going to show the rest of the video, but as you can be best believe, we won. Obviously. Pen best deck. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want you to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. I'll be showcasing a lot more like this and a lot of duels in the future. But for the next few days before Hartford, I want to show a lot of tips and tricks and secrets on what you want to play. This is a little tidbit of the combo, which you guys are going to be seeing a lot of combo tutorials in the next few days. If you guys got this far, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I want to do this. I want to do videos every single day for you guys. Content daily. Man, I love you guys. And it's no excuse to have them post in a while. Also, you guys got this far. Like I said earlier, all playmats have been shipped. So if you guys want to get out your hands on the newest Beyond the Pendulum playmat, the newest your game playmat, get it right now ASAP. And a little, uh, little knowledge for you guys now is going to turn into a deck box too. Very exciting for it. So get yours right now. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.